Have you been considering buying a property in Mexico as a Canadian, but you aren't sure what the process looks like, where you should be buying and what the costs are? In this video, I revisit a conversation I had with my good friend, Ron Chabot, about buying property in Mexico. Ron shares how he and his wife found their property, how they financed it, the pitfalls you should watch out for, the restrictions on us as Canadians, and so much more. Stick around until the end of the video where Ron shares the numbers on his property. If you're looking to use your purchase as an Airbnb or short-term rental, you might be shocked at some of the returns. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. For some context, this video is recorded when I was visiting Ron in Extapa, Mexico, hence the muscle shirts and the cervezas. Enjoy the interview. Let's talk about the specifics on this deal because uh, as you mentioned, you were you came down here to vacation and then I'm assuming that's when you started looking at uh, you know property here as well. Well, what happened is we, had, we, we traveled with some friends and he was kind of going through the brochures and he's the one that actually picked the place. And we'd never been here, so we, you know, we'd been to all the other the other spots, you know, Manzanillo, Mazatlan, Cancun, uh, you know, Acapulco, all those places. So we thought, yeah, this would be nice. It was, we knew it was a smaller, kind of a smaller town and, you know, we're okay with that. So after you came here uh, or while you were visiting here, is that when you started looking at property? We've seen probably eight or nine properties kind of thing, you know, the two weeks that we were here, but we kept walking past this one. It was built. Uh, it was probably three quarters empty or, or more but at least we knew that the thing was finished. So were you looking with a, a realtor here? At first we just, we were just walking around, yeah. It was, uh, and did the, the like places had kind of sales centers here? Like were you walking into yeah. that or talking to people and you were just kind of well, sussing things out on your own or there, was, there yeah. wasn't somebody guiding you? No. Like you didn't have a realtor you were working They did with have her. a sales team here, but as it, as it turned out, there was, there was two sets of sales teams here. There was one that the bank had and then there was the one that the builder had. And I guess what had happened is the builder and the bank ended up kind of parting company because the builder didn't sell all the units that he thought he was gonna, ran out of money, the bank was already in on both projects, and so they decided that we'll finish it, we'll take a certain amount of units, you take your units that you have, and then we'll just make sure we sell, sell everything off and everybody can go their own way. Eventually what happened is the sales team for the bank ended up, the bank decided, hey, we better do this together. So then they got it down to one sales team. Was there a difference in uh, in bank owned units versus the ones? Price wise, um, here was the thing. Some of the units had air conditioners, let's say, in them. The builder had kind of cut every corner. So what he did is, you know, there'd be just like wire sticking out of the out of the receptacles, right? Like there was no light switches. There was no air conditioning. So, so the price was less but you know, it was reflective of those things exactly but then you had to come in and kind of finish the unit that's right i think of now seven years later and i look at some of the properties and, and i mean you can buy a property totally done furnished everything right there's not too many buildings i think that are like this that i've seen down here so i think we were just in on something that was kind of unique yeah a unique situation you can save money by shopping around and and, and fixturing it right whereas if we get the guy down here to do it. I think there's a little propina they call it tacked on. <laughs> What's that? What's propina? <laughs> a little tip here oh, and there. Yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> that was an opportunity really yeah. for you to be able to pick it up at a slight, mm -hmm. uh, at a, yeah. at a, may a slight or, or maybe large discount of what something else would be in comparison and then add your personal touch yeah. to it, which you wanted to do anyway. So, I mean, that, that would have reflected somewhat of the price, like you said. So you decide on the one you ended up buying, the yep. one we're sitting in right now. What's then the process once you decide, okay, this is the unit that we wanted to buy? Then we had to uh, agree on the price. So we put in a, an offer to purchase it. Uh, we did that back in Canada because by this time we'd gone we'd back left, home. Yeah. But when you submitted the offer, like did they get back to you within 24 oh, hours, yeah, 48 hours? Yeah, or was just, like, we, like within, quick. Yeah, within a day we had her hashed okay. out. So once you had an accepted offer, then you had to come down to Mexico yeah. again to, did you have to? Could you have done it? No, we had, we had to, yeah, we we had had to, to be, be here. here. How did you buy the property in your personal name or how does it? Does it you, well, you can go personal or you can form a Mexican corporation. From what I read today too, there's a restricted area for, for foreigners. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying within the restricted area, which I think is 100 miles of the border and 50 miles of the coast, then you can't buy in your personal name. You have to buy in a trust. Yes. And is that what you guys did? Yes, Obviously. that's what we did. Essentially, the bank then acts on your behalf. They purchase the property in a trust and you're the beneficiary of that trust and you are the only person that can has sole access to this property but essentially the bank is acting on your behalf is yeah. that is that yes. how it works and we can pass it down to our children you sure you don't want to pass it to 
to me. Hey, I mean, <laughs> we're close, but not <laughs> back now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a hundred year lease. Yeah. The bank is acting on your behalf, owning the property per se. They lease it back to you for 99 years. You can pass it to anybody. Yeah, right, yeah. The increase in value that you get to benefit from yes. that essentially, not the bank. And how does the notary work? They're acting on your behalf and yeah. on the bank's behalf or you got a notary that's operating separately or do you, do you know? No, I think we, we use the same notary and the fees are somewhere in the, I think it was two to 3% of the value. So it's not so a flat rate fee here? No. It's based on the purchase price of the property. Yeah. So what was the purchase price if, if I can ask? Um, this one we uh, we bought it for by the time we were done with everything about 186,000 Canadian. So after the notary signs all the documents, essentially you have access to the property at yes. that point. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, as far as getting the documentation that you or the owner it took us probably a year. A year. Why is that? Everything. What's the process? Everything has to be funneled through Mexico City. So I mean, you got right. all the Mexico. You know, all the paperwork goes to Mexico City. So they're they're backlogged, and it's just. And I mean. You know, for us it was, hey, we got access, we could, we could, you know, do what we want to it. We bought all our furniture, everything moved in, and hey, after a while it just went, hey, I don't, you know, I'll get it when I get it. But there's a major financial institution operating, like, you know, essentially yes. acting as the trust. How long did it take them to get the whole building sold, do you think? Another four years, five years. And do you, did you have to pay condo fees? Do you pay condo yes, fees here? Yeah. You know, the maintenance fees were, were 40 Four thousand pesos. What would you say all in your expenses are here on a monthly basis? So, well, totally, a co you know, our, we're probably looking at about five hundred and fifty bucks a Canadian a month. A month. Yeah. You can't mortgage here, can you? Either. No. No. You can, but it's not really. Most people don't do it because the interest rates are too high. I, I don't think you can mortgage as a foreigner. So you bought it all in cash, essentially, yeah. at that point. Right. So you don't really have any other expenses on it beyond your your five hundred and fifty yeah. bucks a month. What's the going rental rate of a, of a unit probably similar to yours in this, in this well, complex? Some of the owners here that are renting are getting 32 to 3,500 a month. So if you're getting 35, fine. averaging out to about what, 1,700 a yeah. month throughout the whole year, 1,700 a month at a purchase price of 186 is pretty close to what we call the 1% rule. So that's, that's gonna cash right. flow well. I mean, even if you had a mortgage, it's gonna cash yeah. flow. Obviously you don't have a mortgage. But even at that, seventeen hundred a month, that's about twenty grand a year collecting in revenue. Twenty thousand a year at one hundred and eighty six thousand dollar investment, that's about a eleven or twelve percent return on an annual basis and takes you about eight years to pay that off completely. It's a solid investment here. And you guys are using yours. Yes. We so you don't have the benefit of renting it out. But the nice thing to know is if you weren't here, you could still rent it and it yeah. would be a, a great property. And what's the value uh, of, is there stuff that's sold in here similar to what yeah. yours is, is right now? Yeah, uh, some, there's been some units sell for 4.3 million pesos. Pesos, which is about 360? Something like that, 350. 360,000 yeah. yeah. Canadian dollars. So you've essentially doubled your money in, in seven years yep. on the value and you guys come down here and enjoy it. Every and if you rent it out, I mean, there's, there's and then, and cash there. flows yeah. if, you rev yeah. if you rent it out. I think it's really interesting just the, the differences in, in the system here versus the system at home. And I think there's, but there's still a, a, a tremendous opportunity to either take advantage of coming down here and buying a place and spending your winters here or, you know, buying something down here and using it as a rental property. Because yeah. it looks like it works both ways, depending yeah. on, you know, if you're buying the right place at the right time. Well, thanks so much hey, again yeah. for taking the time. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Ron. If you want to see the extended version, you can check it out right here. If you're curious about investing in a foreign country, it's something that I teach in my master class. Check it out at DarrenVoros.com. If you have questions for me, you can always leave those in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.